you made it here. I know that it's a bit early in the morning, so uh, it can be a bit challenging to, to actually start a morning like this, or quite rewarding as well, if you look at it that, that way. Uh, you're starting the morning with uh, some learning, if this is something new for you, of course. Um, so my name is Guillermo. I will introduce myself uh, a bit later. But I wanted to first uh, tell you what I think is the objective of of this session. I don't know if this is your first cold breakfast or you've been here before. But the idea of the cold breakfast is that <clears throat> we basically build uh, something in real time, um, and uh, people can follow uh, on a tutorial style. So if you have the setup. Uh, the right setup already, um, and you want to set the, the rest of the setup, of course, with me along this way. Uh, uh, during this during this session, you are going to be able to. Uh, I think that's quite cool. But also for the people that maybe get a little bit stressed with <laughs> building an application in roughly one hour, uh, then I understand that you also want to maybe sit back and just enjoy the tutorial. Um, and of course. This is meant to be an interactive session, so please, at any time, feel free to uh, you know, ask any questions. Uh, probably the preferred way of doing this is that uh, you ask the questions in the chat, and then I will pick them up in batches every five to 10 minutes, or I will have a person just uh, over there. You can see them, but they will be, they will be flagging, flagging me the questions. Uh, so yeah, let's keep it as interactive as possible. Uh, also, let me know if you have any problems with the setup. That's definitely going to happen because these things happen. But still, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I will try to help you as much as possible. So that's me. Uh, my name is Guillermo Sánchez. Um, I studied industrial engineering in the Universidad Politécnica de Madrid, uh, where I'm also born and raised in Madrid, Spain. Uh, if you don't know it, I think it's a beautiful city, so you should definitely go visit. Um, I somehow at the end of uh, yeah my my bachelor's uh, got into web development. I, I honestly don't know why it was kind of a rebounding thing, but I actually enjoyed a lot of programming. And somewhere along the way, maybe in my first uh, uh, job position in Deloitte, uh, I started to look to data and machine learning, and then the cloud, and I really fell in love with it. I, so. I think since then, which was like four years ago, I've been already in this uh, data analytics space. Um, currently, I work as an analytics engineer for Go Data Driven, which is a consultancy company based in Amsterdam, which is where I'm here now in this cool office. And uh, it's a really nice place to work, uh, really good, uh, really nice work for our clients as well, uh, building data platforms and uh, my dad, um, also building ETLs on those platforms and building data warehouses. Um, and I think you can really see the impact of, of data um, in, in these sort of projects, which is something that I, that I enjoy a lot personally. In my free time, I like to read, uh, hang out with friends, classic stuff, uh, play the guitar, and I also do some sports as well. Um, I had to reinvent myself during uh, COVID because I I couldn't do uh, much basketball because it's a combat sport. So yeah, I switched to tennis a little bit, which is more COVID friendly, I guess. Um, yeah, and basically anything that pulls me out of a computer, I like computers, don't get me wrong. That's why I'm here in the first place. But I think when you are just like uh, way too much time around a computer, it's actually quite nice to do something else not related to it. Well. What are we going to do today in this not so fancy diagram? I kind of explain it right. So we're going to connect to a stream of data using Materialize. So Materialize is some sort of uh, you can yeah you cannot really define it as a database, but it looks as a database uh, and, and it acts as if it was a database so, somehow, so, some, somehow, somewhat. Um, and basically, using Materialize, we're going to create uh, Materialize views. I will explain what that is uh, a little bit later. And uh, we are going to connect uh, via ADBC from uh, Metabase, which is a visualization tool. And then we will create uh, basically a dashboard with some results. Um, so the cool thing about, uh, 
about this uh, sort of setup is that we're actually making it really simple to, to create a real-time analytics application, which traditionally I think it, it is not. Uh, it's space that is all big in, in Kafka, of course, and, and then you need uh, Scala or Java knowledge. And um, yeah, I think this really eases up the way you uh, deal with analytics and, and streams of data. So materialize, what is it? And yeah, I told the guys from materialize uh, to come at least one of them so that uh, maybe you, you can, they can answer some questions after all, afterwards because materialize is a, quite a complex thing, how it works. And I want to make sure that I get it right. So please feel free to interrupt at any point and also answer any questions that maybe the public may have. Um, so oh, sorry. materialize, what is it? Materials basically is a tool that helps you build, among other things, analytics applications on top of streams or, uh, of data, or also continuously changing transactional databases, right? And it's also open source, which is really cool. Uh, it does uh, so by using materialized views, which basically store the results of a query and only change it uh, incrementally by means of uh, something called change, change data capture. Feed. Uh, which is something quite cool. I recommend you to check it out if you want. Uh, Materialize uses a data flow engine to process this change data capture feed and update these materialized views. And why I think it's so cool, basically, it's really lightweight. Um, so, so it's really a, a lightweight way of maintaining materialized views only using SQL. And uh, yeah. Uh, I think basically you can sum it up by saying that the streaming became way more manageable with materialize. And uh, Metabase, uh, which is the other tool that we will be using, is a user friendly and open source visualization tool. It's SQL based, which I really like because I don't like visualization tools that uh, have their own language. Maybe that's convenient sometimes. For me, it's not. Uh, so I really like SQL based tools, and I think it's mostly pretty lightweight because it pushes the data workloads uh, to the warehouse. Uh, so everything, every statement that you're executing basically uh, happens in the warehouse. Okay, so yeah, this is mostly it uh, for, for the presentation, obviously not for the work, so now we're going to get into it. Uh, yeah, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, otherwise, I will start. And what I will do now is I will share with you in the chat uh, this repository. And then just in case you cannot follow me because I will go way too fast or something like that, you always have the possibility basically of, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, of, of sharing this one. Let me just open this so I can actually. Oh, I'm struggling quite well to find Zoom. I don't know what's important. Okay, there we go. Where do we have a chat? There we go. To everyone, this is it. So you can basically go there. It's already directly to, directed to the, to the run book. Uh, and the run book is basically what you need to follow uh, uh, or follow it with me basically in order to build the application. So I will go back to the run book. So it's quite convenient. Um, yeah, so first of all, I have open Docker here. Um, I basically share the amount of resources that you may need uh, for, for this. Uh, so I have eight, eight, eight CPUs uh, reserved for Docker and four gigabytes of memory. Uh, this should be quite okay. Uh, you won't need anything else, uh, I believe. Um, and then the next thing that you need probably is to start a couple of terminals. I will have a couple of them all the time. Um, 
Let me know if you cannot see them properly. I will make them a bit bigger just in case. So that we can follow up quite easy. Okay. And now, uh, what we're going to do, first of all, is to set up materialize. Okay. So I basically uh, gave a way of setting up materialize for uh, Mac, uh, also Linux and Windows as well. So if it's, if it's Mac, the best way you can do it, and obviously I already did this, but anyway, I'll show you how to do it. If you have homebrew, basically just type view, big PQ, and then as you uh, brew install the PQ, sorry. And this should install basically uh, lib PQ. And afterwards, uh, what you need to do is to run view uh, force building force with view. And what this is going to do basically is that this is going to uh, send uh, lib PQ to the user. Uh, to, to users local bin, uh, which I believe it will already be included in the path, so you won't need to uh, basically set it as a, a variable. And uh, um, basically, if this doesn't uh, uh, work with Mac, you can also uh, just install the PQ, and then afterwards you can open your bus profile and export, um, yeah, export this path variable. Which is basically where your lib installation will be set up by default. So here you can also check uh, there. Yes. So if I do, uh, and then, uh, yeah. So you can see here that I actually did it this way, and I have the export part here, basically, which is also including my version of uh, PostgreSQL. Okay. So yeah, if you manage to install it, uh, you also need to have in mind that particularly uh, for for Linux users, it's really easy. For Windows users, it's not easy. Sorry for the Windows ones that are connected. Um, I can wait for you if you need me to. If that's the case, uh, because uh, yeah, it's a bit more complicated. So you need to go to Enterprise DB basically, and here you will download the specific uh, version for for Windows uh, 64 bits. And then uh, yeah, at some point it will uh, let you uh, select how many things you want to install, and then you should only install the command line tools. Um, basically, yeah, and after that. Maybe you can do the easier way, which is basically set the path for, for the CMD session, and this would be enough to open the materialize the PSQL console. Why are we doing this, by the way? It's because we need to install the PostgreSQL CLI tools to, to connect to materialize. So the next thing that we're going to do is download the materialize image, right? So this statement right here, what it does is basically download the materialize image directly if you don't have it locally. I do, but I will show you uh, how this works. And it will run it directly, by the way. I will just do it with a different version, for example, like 7.2. So it is unable to find it locally. And also, could not find it somewhere else. So maybe I did this. Hmm, that's weird. Another version, maybe. Uh, because it's already a conflict with the name, sorry guys. So I will just put fake materialize here. But for you, it should work. Fake materialize. There you go. Exactly. And if you go now to 
the Docker desktop, you see that uh, this desktop materializes is running. But I want the version 7.3 because it's the one that I made the tutorial on. So I will just stop this. No, I should delete it because I don't want the container to be there. And what I will do is I will start it from the UI. You can also do Docker start, uh, but I don't want my um, yeah, I, I, I don't want it. To, I don't want to basically do it here just because uh, my terminal is going to be occupied. So I will just start materializing from here. Okay, so this is quite simple. Docker, you know, we we'll love it. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, first of all, check that my installation of PSQL is okay. You can do this by typing PSQL help. Awesome, everything looks good. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this statement. And what this is doing is basically is using the PSQL CLI to connect to materialize. Um, and it's only going to do it via local host. And the port is 6875 because that's the port that we defined in Docker and that we mapped to our local computer. So if I run this, I should already go into materialize. Cool. Um, well, so this is quite nice. We already have a materialized lab. I'm also going to do something just in case, which is I'm going to drop the database from the previous time that I run the demo. There we go. Ciao. And now, guys, we are already halfway through in the setup part, right? So we have materialized running here. I will uh, leave this part B, and then I will go to my other command, uh, uh, my other terminal, and then I will set up MetaBase, which is the easiest thing that you can do ever. So you just need to do this Docker run statement. So as I told you before, this is going to also download the image. It's from locally, and it's going to run it as well. I've already done this, uh, of course. Um, I already have a, a MetaBase installation in Docker. So I can just do either Docker start uh, from the terminal or from the UI. I can just start it here. Simple. Now MetaBase is starting. And of course, we can check this quite simply by either going to localhost 300, the port, or you can also click this <coughs> opening browser uh, link from the Docker UI. And this is not there yet. Let's uh, wait a little bit for it to load. So let's see. Wait. Let me see. It's interesting. If it's already started, it looks like it already has started. So let's open the browser. Now, there we go. So it takes a while, obviously, because MetaBase is quite uh, a bit more heavy. But we're there, which is a good thing. And now we can get to uh, the interesting part, right? So the first thing, make sure that you have the terminal open. Uh, if not, you can run this, this command again. And what we are going to do first is we are going to simply create a database uh, called, called breakfast. And afterwards, we're going to create just a dummy schema. Uh, yeah, just because by default, otherwise, we're going to use the, the, the default schema in Materialize. And I don't want to do that. I want to have my own database uh, so that I can connect to a particular set of uh, views and materialized views afterwards. So cool. Let's do this. Um, so we'll just copy paste these statements. And I go to the materialized console. This one I'm actually going to ditch because I don't need it so far. And then I will just copy paste these statements, and this will create a database and a schema. So this is quite simple, right? We can also do afterwards. Uh, uh, so databases. And you will see here that we have our, our database code breakfast. Nice, nice, nice and simple, sir. Uh, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a connection from MetaBase to Materialize. 
so this is quite simple. The steps are here, but I'm going to walk you through in the MetaBase UI. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the admin page of MetaBase. And this is quite simple. Just click in settings, top corner right. And then you go to admin. And this will spin up the admin interface of MetaBase. Um, here you can click in databases. OK. And then within databases, I already have the materialized code work fast. Uh, you will just need to add a database. But I will also walk you through the process as well, which is exactly the same. Basically, it's this UI. And uh, this is the moment where I needed to basically learn about uh, some networking in Docker, because uh, it is actually quite important that you also get, I'm going to open a new terminal, uh, you get the particular IP of um, of the Docker, uh, the Docker container where materialize is running, because otherwise you're not going to be able to look at, to to connect to it. So if you now, for example, type localhost and the post where the, and, the, and the port where materialize is, that's not going to work. So I had to actually figure out that, that there's a connection uh, already, uh, a networking bridge between uh, Docker containers that are running on your computer, and therefore they can talk to each other, but we have to give them their particular IP address. So what we can do, quite simply, is to run this Docker inspect. And then the inspect basically uh, will look into materialize, which is particularly uh, uh, the, the container that we want to look into. And what you will do is you will also par parse the inspect, which is like a huge JSON, uh, and will only fetch the IP address. So therefore, if we do this, Awesome. We get this IP address, which is thankfully the one that I already have. Uh, otherwise, I need to change it. So then I can go back to the MetaBase UI, and I will put the host uh, here. Uh, also, the database type, you should type PostgreSQL, so you shouldn't find materialized here. Um, so materialized uses uh, uh, PostgreSQL as, a, as an interface, so the, the connection is uh, practically the same. Um, so it goes through, through Postgres, the port that you specified before, and the name of uh, the database. I think there's some questions popping up in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see that Marie has uh, some problems. You can see it has the M1 zip. So guys, if somebody has the M1 and could solve her problem, that'd be great. I, I, I have Intel, so uh, yeah, I cannot really uh, give you any recommendations. So. Guillermo, I actually also have a, an issue with the MetaBase. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. So, so my it's request when I, I started it up for the first time, and it requests me to fill in all these uh, uh, password and, uh, and username and uh, email address. Is that necessary? Do you recall from the first time that you entered? Uh, exactly. exactly. So it is actually uh, no worries because <laughs> this is all going to be stored in your in, in the local Postgres that is attached to MetaBase. So <laughs> they are not going to spam you with anything, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, you need to you need to subscribe the first, uh, and you will be automatically. So this first user will be the admin user afterwards, and the thing, MetaBase in fact will ask for for the password every now and then uh, once it's been out of it. Uh, so this time for me, it didn't ask the password, but sometimes it does. So yeah, indeed you need to do that. Thanks. Cool. I will wait also uh, a couple of minutes for people that are actually uh, trying to log in into MetaBase. Uh, so just now, thanks Bas, for bringing it up that you need to log in the first time. Actually sign up, no problem. Okay. Um, yeah, and basically the next part uh, of the of the setup is also quite easy as well. So you specify the database name, uh, uh, and we're going to use the default username. Of course, you can create roles and users in Materialize, but I thought this was maybe a bit of, out of the scope of, of this session. So uh, I said to go with the default one, which is basically Materialize and the password. Even though it looks like we have a password here, there's none. So just don't fill the password. Uh, there's no password to give. 
And afterwards, you will, of course, make changes to the connection. And you can even sync the database schema and rescan the values just in case you want to check that the connection is okay and up and running. Okay, so let's save the changes, which I didn't do any, so that's not a problem. So success will indicate basically that it's connecting successfully to the database. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot. Okay. So next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to exit admin. So you do this basically by clicking on the settings at the wall, and then afterwards clicking exit admin, and then we get back to the metabase uh, um, UI. The next part that we're going to take on is we're going to connect to a PubNub source. So what is PubNub? Let me open it up for you. So PubNub basically just offers a set of uh, um, real-time streams of data that you can connect to publicly. So basically, if you go to this one, which is the one that we're going to use, market orders, you will see that there's a stream basically of uh, data. And you can connect easily uh, using the subscribe, su subscribe key. Uh, but we already have this in the statement that I copy pasted here, basically. So simple as it is, you can just copy paste this statement. And what it will do basically is it will create a source, a materialized source, uh, in our cold breakfast dummy schema. Uh, and I will call it market order straw. Uh, so basically, uh, already indicate from Batna to materialize. And they basically know how to establish the connection, and you just have to indicate the subscribe key, which is the one that I showed you before. And the channel that we want to subscribe to in this case is PubNub Market Orders, as I mentioned before. And you can copy paste this and go to your materialized console. I'm going to pick up this one. This will create the source. Of course, in materialize, you can always do this. Okay. Actually, let's do something better. So from um, go breakfast, go then schema, go market orders from. And we're going to limit it to 10 so that we check basically. Oh, sorry. I, this is only a little bit. There you go. You can see there's some questions or some comments in the chat. Uh, okay. Ah, nice, Andy. Thanks for that. Um, okay. So, as you can see, guys, basically, this is how. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the raw source basically coming from from Pavna. So this is just we have a one column text and we have all these kind of JSON objects over here. So obviously this is not consumable directly, right? So uh, we need to do some processing to make this into a tabular uh, kind of view, and this is what we're going to do next so that we can actually um, yeah act upon this data. So there's like this in between cleaning step, I would call it. And um, uh, we're going to create a view, basically. And this view is going to be called market orders. Now it's not raw anymore. And uh, the way this works, basically, is that we are mapping uh, the text, uh, so the text column that we saw before, to a JSON B object in Materialize. Um, and we are going to uh, basically uh, so each object of the JSON B, so each attribute of the JSON B will be mapped to value, to val. And uh, there we can use this syntax here basically to parse directly uh, these variables. So basically val symbol yeah, would be symbol. And for example, for, for floats and ints, I also cast them uh, with these two dots to float and int. And this will basically create a tabular uh, kind of uh, format that we can actually act upon. 
So let's copy. So we created the view, and now we can basically show how it works. So um, down here. Have to put the semicolon at the end. Yes. Okay, so as you can see here, basically this has been parsed to a nice table, so this is already quite nice. We can work with this. We like this. Um, yeah, there's also this uh, so this timestamp column uh, column is in uh, actually in in, in epoch time in Unix uh, Unix epoch. Uh, so this is actually yeah. It could be inconvenient if you want, but now I'm actually going to leave it like this because uh, to operate it can be quite nice. We can also convert it with uh, the Postgres to timestamp uh, later on. Um, so it, it's, it's actually possible to, to also do this in Materialize. Most of the Postgres SQL and uh, formulas and, and syntax is supported by Materialize. Okay. You see there's any questions so far? Not good. So, uh, okay, so first thing that we're going to do now is now we're going to uh, build a materialized view um, uh, in, in, in materialized. And this materialized view is basically going to take this is like the simplest uh, example possible. This is, this is just going to take um, the, the last uh, 300 seconds of, uh, of data. To visualize, so 300 seconds is five minutes. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to visualize a time series of uh, the bid prices in the last five minutes. So let's go for that. Um, so basically, as you can see here, by the way, I'm selecting the maximum timestamp column and I'm uh, filtering by 300 seconds less than this maximum timestamp column. So let's pick this up. And this yes, this we created a materialized view. Cool. So now let's go to MetaBase. And in MetaBase, what we're going to do is we're going to basically click in Browse All Items here in our analytics. And uh, yeah, I basically want to create another collection. And I would call it. Uh, Go breakfast. Last slide. Um, cool description. And I'm going to locate it also in our analytics, which is fine. And basically, a collection is just a, 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 a group of objects of any type in MetaBase. So this could be dashboards, or this could be um, uh, any other type of visualization tables. Uh, and you can all aggregate this basically in a collection. So then let's create the collection. And here we have our code life, just absolutely empty. So we, what we want to do is probably add something. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write a SQL statement. Here it will ask me like, hey, what database do you want to connect with? We go for materialized code breakfast, which is the one that we set up before. And we do something as simple as, obviously, I don't need to copy paste this, but I will. Um, and you can just write simple SQL, as I told you before. Metabase is cool because it's a simple SQL. And then you can just run this query and voila. Um, so you right now, basically, what we're getting is uh, uh, so we're getting um, basically a table, but we don't want a table. This table doesn't look cool. We want a nice visualization. And also because the business value is better, guys, let's be honest. And now what I'm going to do is uh, right now, this doesn't really make sense, right? I'm visualizing timestamp column against speed price. So it makes sense. Let's, let's make sense out of this. So first of all, I only want to visualize speed price. And 
you can do this quite easy in the in the UI. And the x-axis, I want it to be the timestamp column because that's what I want to visualize. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a series breakout because uh, this is just aggregating the bid prices. And I want to do that again. I want to uh, basically separate this by company so I can see all of them. As you can see, this is uh, yeah, really real stuff. Um, so then I can click on done here and I will save this particular object, which is a visual, and I will call the uh, price over the last five minutes. Properly, cool time series graph. And we're going to select basically in which collection do we want it, which in this case would be copper for slash. We could save. It tells us we want to add this to a dashboard. We're going to say not now. But the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and create the dashboard actually. So let's click in the plus button over the top right and then new dashboard. Let me see if there's some questions so far. Some of us. There's no questions. Cool, guys. But if there's a question, just let me know. Okay, new dashboard. And we're going to call this uh, uh, gold breakfast live dashboard. Amazing real time dashboard. If you're tired of uh, putting amazing, you can also don't do it. Gold breakfast live. And then we include it in the collection as always, because we want to keep all the objects in the same collection. That's a good practice for MetaBase. And then we create the dashboard. The dashboard is obviously looking empty. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the dashboard. And once we go into edit mode, we have this plus button here and it tells us to add a question. So we can go to breakfast live and we can select the price over the last minutes. Okay, we're going to extend this quite simply so that basically we have the whole overview. And uh, now you're seeing like, hey, this car doesn't move. Why is it moving? I completely agree. It's a bit of a bummer if it doesn't move. So next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. And then we go into the time schedule, right? So there's this auto refresh. And now you're going to be surprised because mm, Auto refresh is only allowed for one minute. That's right. By default, in the MetaBase um, open source, you can only refresh every one minute, but we can do a hack, which is what we're going to do. Um, obviously, not sustainable in a production environment, but uh, I think it's quite okay for, for this purpose. So we're going to set the refresh rate for 60 seconds, and then we're going to copy paste the URL in another tab. And just indicate that you want to refresh every one second. And then you have real time graph. Okay, so this is quite cool. Also, you can toggle over to see the values, although, yeah, maybe it doesn't make full sense uh, if you're actually having a real time view. Okay, there's something in the chat. Nice. I see that somebody liked it. Okay, so now uh, obviously the part of the tutorial which is like creating a particular graph is over, but we're going to go into uh, um, basically building our own materialized views that maybe give us more value than this one. So as you can see, basically this now doesn't provide us any value, right? This looks cool. It's a line that's moving. We like that, those kind of things, but to be absolutely honest, there's no real value uh, on this graph right now, right? So let's let's try to think of things that are, can actually be valuable for a real-time analytics use case. And the first thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you in the repo where you can find the queries that I'm going to use, okay? So you can go to materialize, and then you have all these queries. If you go into materialize views particularly, uh, you will have the price evolution, which is the one that we just used, and these other two queries. Um, 
Um, so we are going to go and build another two materialized views and the graphs corresponding to it. And then after that, I think I will uh, let the rest of the of, of, of the time to, to maybe discuss what cool things we could have done. Um, yeah, and discuss maybe other things about the tool. So uh, first one that I'm going to go for is I just want the average speed price per company in the last minute. So this already gives me an indication more or less of uh, this is already the last minute. You already cannot have an indication of, yeah, is this price stable? Is it not? Which one is the one that I want to bid for maybe? Um, so there's already a bit more value. Still, I don't think it's fully valuable, but we will see. And of course, I'm open to some use cases from your side as well. So I'm just going to copy paste uh, these in order to do it. And I'm going to go to the materialized console where I create my materialized views. I'm going to copy paste this, enter, and we have our full new view. And I'm going to, to follow the same process as before. So I'm going to write a SQL query in the materialized code request. And I'm going to call it, just to remember which one was the name. Okay, let's do this. Set this up. I remember. Uh, this is one that I want. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do a select all from and we run this. And then we have our bid prices. So this is an average of the last 16 seconds as well. Um, which means that basically instead of taking the whole stream, which at some point it, it, basically these this prices won't vary at all because you're taking the whole stream. So uh, you're doing an average over more values, which means that uh, yeah, if you want to see like the changes in a short amount of time, you should go for a short interval, of course. Um, okay, so now we're going to turn this into a visualization that makes sense for us. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go for a bar chart. I'm going to go to the settings bar. Sorry. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it like this. In this case, the access I'm also going to do like this, but maybe I will change the color because I don't like purple. I know if you do, I don't. I'm going to go for yeah, look, I'm doing like blue today. Um, what else do I want to do? I also want to display, if possible, the values of the data points. And there we go. So as you can see, the UI in Metalis is super easy. You can just change things on demand pretty easy and fast. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to save this to our collection. And the presses. Prices over the last minutes. Uh, description. No, this time it's not that cool. Just a simple uh, graph. We're going to put it in our collection, and then we're going to save it. We want to add it to the dashboard. Yes, we want, but I rather go to the edit mode of the dashboard. I just prefer it. Uh, this way, so I'm going to click not now, and then you can actually go to your dashboard, your the slide. Here are all the objects. I also wanted to show you this. So here you also have um, yeah, all the objects uh, together, and you can see basically even the type of graph that they are uh, with these icons, which is quite cool. And this is the icon for dashboard, of course. Then we go into the dashboard and uh, we click edit. And we click the bottom add question, go back to sleep, and we get our average price. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And there we have our next one. Let's save it. And now what we can do is we can refresh. And there we go, it's already refreshed. So we are. 
And let me just make sure that the refresh rate is okay. It can also be the case that um, the path oh, sorry. that the path map source uh, has stopped the stream of data. If that happens, we will just recreate everything from scratch. Uh, but it goes quite fast, so it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I think this is definitely the case. So uh, path map because it's an, um, it's absolutely free. It uh, basically stops the stream of data at some point, but already reviewed this thing. So what we can do is quite simply go to our queries. I have this query called the utils. So you can go to the utils here and you can use the delete script and we just drop the source and cascade afterwards. Okay, no worries about this. Nothing will happen. And right after we Get to all the DL, and we just need to do this from scratch on this one, from this part on. And I'm going to show the database we don't need to create because it's already there, but we are going to reconnect to the source. I know a little bit funky, but if we need to do it, it's also fine. Okay, so now this now this is starting over again, as you can see. Uh, and at some point, uh, when there's enough data, it will just come out quite all right. But even leave even live guys, uh, we can we can uh, hit these roadblocks and it's fine, no worries. Okay, so we have like our two graphs right now, right? We have like this. Uh, Interesting that you just got, which looks cool, uh, but really doesn't do much. This already gives us an indication of uh, what are the average prices of the companies that we're targeting, right? So imagine that we're only targeting these five companies. So we know where the prices are, right? And basically, we know if they are steady or not, more or less. Uh, we can see their evolution on average. But really, if I want to buy, I probably want to know what are the increments, right? I want to know. Uh, yeah, what is going on? Is the tendency upwards or downwards? Because for what I get here, basically, it's just an absolute mess. And this does not indicate anything for me. So I want to know if the tendency over a certain period of time is positive or not. And that leads us to our last graph, which is probably the one that is more actionable, if you ask me. This is over here, or put it in the right place. Serialized, serialized views. And we have these uh, delta last minute versus previous. So, what this does is, first of all, uh, it uses a cool with statement. Uh, so, materialized does not support yet, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, please uh, uh, say it in the chat, does not support yet window functions. So, I did this in a kind of different funky way, which is basically I take uh, the last minute as a table. Uh, I group by the bid prices basically of the last uh, 16 seconds, and then I group by uh, the prices of uh, the previous 16 seconds, as you can see here. And I, I do this by using a weak statement, which is great that is supported by Materialize because we all love weak statements, and Materialize also supports joins of all kinds. So basically, you can just get the previous minute, the last minute, and then just join them together, and you will get. Um, yeah, the average bid price last minute, the average bid price previous minute, and the delta as well, so that we can kind of compare them very company. Okay. Can I ask a question? Um, all the way in the beginning, you said so. Uh, I think the like the underlying um, architecture for materialize is is data flow, right, or or not? Exactly, it is data flow. Okay, but because there you have that window functionality, right? Uh, maybe. So just maybe we can. Um, so this is already the last part of, of the uh, of the tutorial. So maybe let me just finish this and let's park that question because we also have uh, some people from materialized. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Nice, Daniel. Thanks.
things for the for the sharing the resources. Okay. I will definitely leave. Uh, so we have, we still have like thirty minutes left. So I will leave quite some time uh, for the end, um, so that you can discuss everything that you like regarding the the tech stack that we use. If you want to ask any questions about materials and methods, please feel free to do so. Now let's go create our cool view. Okay, so it's created perfectly. And then usual, usual deal, go to uh, metabase. Let me move this again. This is in the middle. Um, we create um, a new view, sorry, a, a, a new query. And we're going to also all breakfast. And I remember the name. Delta breakfast. Okay. So we select this. We're going to get this table. I actually like this table personally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune, like, uh, yeah, tune it up a little bit. So I want to select the table and I want to keep it like this. You can also, by the way, um, if I leave this right, you can also change the name of the column so you can put it in a nicer way. I'm not going to do it because it's not really that relevant, but you can just edit basically the settings of each of the, of the fields also. If you would want to, I don't know, add more decimal or something like that. Uh, I'm going to go for conditional formatting, which is what I think is going to be for cool. I'm going to take the delta and I'm going to say, hey, if the delta is, um, yeah, probably greater than zero, this means it is growing. So we like that, let's put it in green. And then let's highlight the whole row so that you also get the prices of the previous mean versus uh, the current mean. Um, and we're going to add another row now, which is basically on the as well. And what we want is that if it's less than zero, we make it red because we don't like that. And we highlight the whole row. And now we add this rule, click on done. Save. Uh, so this is the uh, delta of the mid price last minute versus previous minute. Description. Now this is cool. Yes, the slide. We save it there. Yes, please. Or now, I don't like it like that. And then you go to your dashboard, you edit, and you pick out our beautiful table. Um, yeah, you probably have a better UI sense than I have. I'll just leave it here. But this may be way too big for it, but anyway, I will just leave it like that. And uh, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click save. And uh, now we can do the usual deal, or actually it's already done. And you can see in real time how this delta uh, is varying. Uh, so this is, I think, personally, a more valuable graph. Obviously, this is dummy data, so you cannot expect like real values or uh, things that actually make sense. Uh, but yeah, if I'm me, I'm not. I'm definitely not going for best being gas in the near future. <laughs> it looks really bad. Uh, so this is already something that maybe you can, uh, you know, act upon. Um, um, it's already more steady, and you can see, like for example, Google is growing, even though the growth rate grows a little bit fast. And you can even select like bigger, bigger chunks of uh, of time, right? You can also go for instead of one minute, uh, you can also go for the last five minutes and compare to the previous last five minutes, and. and you can get something that is a bit more stable and you can see whether actually it's, it's an increase that uh, sustains over time. Okay, so yeah, I think this was uh, mostly it for, for the demo part. 
Um, I want to actually use the rest of the time to just have a discussion because I think mostly in these in these tutorials uh, you get a lot of talking in, in in a short amount of time. I actually thought that one hour was good enough for me, and then we can just have a discussion uh, the rest of the time regarding materialized meta base um, and yeah everything you may like. Uh, so thanks guys. Uh, and now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I will share it again if you need need me to show you something, of course. And please just go for any questions that you have. Okay. Okay. So Alessandro started a conversation. Uh, okay, I see that Bas already answered this question uh, regarding uh, why metabase versus superset or cliff house? I personally haven't used uh, superset much. So, yeah, I'm not really familiar with superset. Um, hey, Guillermo, I can probably answer the question about window functions. Yeah. Um, so, so the data flow that, like, um, if you're referring to there's Google data flow. Um, that's not what materialize is based on under the hood. It's this differential data flow and timely data flow project that uh, I think somebody linked in the chat. And um, the the window function bit, it's a really interesting one where if you think about, uh, you know, the SQL window functions like, uh, you know, where you're doing the, you can, there's, you know, you can do ones where it's like rank over and then you partition by within um, your select statement. And the reason it's difficult on an incrementally maintained view is that that's one of the few things where one new piece of data coming in can change every single result. If you think about it, like uh, if you are doing a rank window function or a you know, row number type of thing, um, you know, you add one uh, new event coming in, that's the maximum value and every single result has a change. And so it's, it's just like, it's just like more complicated under the hood. And so it's under development, um, but it'll always be, uh, there's, there's a few like workarounds, like what you showed where uh, you're basically doing different join types to achieve the same effect of a window function. Um, and that's probably like um, what you'll have to use for the next probably three months uh, until we start to add proper window functions in. Ooh, thanks for the answer, by the way. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, Windows fun window functions is something that I think is quite used in analytics. Um, but you can also do this work around, uh, which also works quite well as the other as you saw. Yes, do you have any other questions? Please. I let a lot of a lot of time free for, for these sort of questions. So yeah, just out of interest, maybe do you have something like running in production in one of your clients or any experience um, with doing this uh, yeah, on a bigger scale or? So I think at least uh, one person in this call was, um, he definitely investigated it a little bit. Um, I don't know, Bas, uh, what was the result of, uh, of that? Maybe you can meet yourself. Is there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Um, still investigating. Uh, um, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, to be honest, I, I think materialize has a lot of potential, but there's also some, uh, yeah, for example, the window functions, um, which in, uh, for our client was also like, okay, maybe if that's not in place yet, then I'm not sure if that's uh, at this moment in time uh, the best choice for us. So we're, we're a bit um, with that struggle. So nothing in production yet, a lot of uh, proof of concepts and um, trying stuff out. Yeah, okay, thanks. 
and, and, and also like uh, from my side, so materials is relatively new, but still really promising as well, uh, which means that, you know, the community is building up. It's, uh, it's also one of the cool things about materials as a really nice community. Andy, which is uh, the head of the community, it's also here in this call. Um, he can tell you about the, the community is growing quite a lot, and I think that helps out a lot in these kind of use cases, right? So when you, um, yeah, when you start seeing people that are deploying materialized to production and, and start doing things with materialized, I think it helps a lot because, um, yeah, you can actually ask those people in the community and then relate, and then it starts growing and it gets better. So yeah, I think it's a matter of time that it just starts to happen more often. That's my opinion. Um, so, do you have any other questions? Or maybe remarks? Okay, if, uh, if there's nothing, maybe the next couple of minutes, I think I will uh close close like a breakfast a bit earlier i thought you were going to be more chatty in the morning but <laughs> i guess that all happens but uh, we still need some coffee guys i i fully understand yeah yes uh for sure so the github the github uh, repo is going to be there so whenever you uh, want to take it out uh, you can we will also send it uh, we will send a, a mail uh after these yeah after the um, after this session, and you will have there all the details with the GitHub page and um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So don't worry about it. You will have it in a reminder as well. Um, sorry because I'm looking down all the time because the camera is there, but <laughs> I'm looking down. Um, yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Okay. I think Catalin asked the question. I don't mind. Catalin, maybe I can answer that question. I don't know Big House enough to answer that question. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it was really nice. Um, yeah, I hope I can make another cold breakfast in the future. Maybe we can do something uh, different. So also, I'm open to suggestions. You can connect me connect with me in LinkedIn and um, yeah, just propose anything that you'd like. Um, yeah, I'm open to um, to prepare another cold breakfast that uh, maybe um, on some on some things that you may find interesting as well.